welcome to this week's Your Manchester. What a fab week it's been. This week we got to see a fab musical all about Dusty Springfield and it was lovely. Did oh, you it, enjoy it? Oh, it was marvellous. Mm. Catherine Kingsley, amazing. amazing. What I will eat tonight. I'm off to watch Fame. I'm off to watch Fame right now, yeah. Straight after this, yeah. Amazing, you'll be on like yellow taxi and everything. I know. But enough about the shows going around. Let's talk about our plethora of guests. Oh, yes, of course. We're going to be speaking to DJ Paulette, Paige Gadsby, and lots of others. It's a jam packed show. But first, let's pop over to Soap Corner where our Hayley has a guest. Who you got, Hayley? She's got a friend. A friend, best yeah. friend. Mm. Hi, I'm Hayley, and sharing my bean bag today is Louise Wilson. Hi, how are you doing? Oh, I'm fine, thank you, Hayley. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Thanks for popping in. It's all right. So you've just done Corrie, haven't you? Yeah. What have you done on that? Yeah, um, did it about filmed it about six weeks ago, and I played a nurse on it mm -hmm. um, opposite Anthony Cotton. Right. I'm going to be uh, involved in his homeless storyline, so it should be on telly next Wednesday the 1st. Mm -hmm. Big story. Mm -hmm. Next Very Wednesday, story, folks. Yeah. We have to keep our eyes peeled yeah. for that, won't we? And it's not your first tell it because you've done Hollyoaks as well, haven't you? Yeah, I did that in like, oh gosh, uh, 2005 now, yeah. Mm. I played a woman in the cafe who got insulted by Tony Hutchinson, who's like the Ken Barlow of Hollyoaks. <laughs> And I got to slap him across the face. So that Not was bad. quite therapeutic. I bet it was. We yeah. in a bad mood that day yeah. as well, just for extra, you know. Um... Yeah, well, I did it in one take, so I must have been, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you've just got a commercial come out as well, haven't you? Yeah, it's a, it's an online commercial uh, mm. for Dr. Beckman, and it's starring the lovely Sean Williamson, who played Barry in EastEnders. So already we're yeah. ticking off Corey, Hollyoaks, yeah. and EastEnders it, aren't we? Yeah. And where can people find that? Uh, if they go on YouTube, uh, just type in Dr. Beckman Barry and it's on there and it's um, a spoof of the Levi adverts uh, you know when he strips off and takes his jeans off in the laundry oh, I can't remember that yeah, so it's a spoof on that yeah. God, when was that out now it's quite yeah. Mid 80s, I think. Yeah, well, I remember that. Yeah, they come out again in the 90s. I think they well. must have repeated it. I yeah. think they did. They must have, because yeah. we're not that old. No, we're not. Like, we're not. No. <laughs> and you've got your own theatre company as well, haven't you? Yeah. Baps Theatre. Baps Theatre, yeah, yeah. Uh, run by three women, hence the Baps. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, we've been really busy with that. Um, we have like a, a show we do uh, at the moment, like biannual called uh, Northwest Wonders, yeah. which you I did. You, know, you did because I've got the lipstick thespians. Yeah. We've got a similar ethos our company. Yeah, yeah. So you, had, you actually had a lipstick with your baps. Didn't yeah, you? a lipstick joined the baps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had a lipstick uh, sandwich. Did well, didn't we? Yeah, we did. <laughs> so you joined us on that, um, so that was really successful. So we're looking to doing that again. Um, we're looking to do maybe a full length play, which we're researching at the moment. Oh, wonderful! And Are you looking for writers at the moment for that uh, one? Yeah, so if anyone's interested, just uh, have a look. We're at Baps Theatre on Twitter, so just drop them what's the line What's the web link for um, that? It's uh, bapstheatre.com. Bapstheatre.com, yeah. and that link should be coming up yeah. for you now as well. Now, lastly, before I let you go, I cannot let you go without asking, dish us some curry goss. Mm, 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 mm. I can't. I can't. Come on, no, I can't. Can't. Just come on. <laughs> you can't blame a girl for trying. On that note, we're going to get out of this sweaty studio, we're yeah, gonna grab a yeah. drink, and I'm afraid, folks, that's all from Salt Corner. But I will see you next time. Bye. <laughs> On our couch now is Dan Westwood. Yes, he's of course normally our gadget guru. But tonight he's here to talk about something very close to a lot of people's hearts. And minds. Currently three million people in the UK suffer with anxiety and it's time to talk. Welcome Dan. Hi guys, you alright? So uh, what is it you're launching then? So I've got um, a campaign and that launches Friday, 12 noon. Um, and you guys know a little bit about obviously me and obviously my struggles and stuff but it's all to do with anxiety and basically the long long and short of it is um we i believe social media has got a lot to play on people's mm -hmm. anxiety with the, the the build up of the the perfect life that you should lead really so we're turning it around and we're going to see how quickly we can send a good message on social media facebook and twitter and so on and that's brilliant i think it's something that people aren't aware of because we see you on our screens as our gadget guy you're always smiling you know you look like nothing will phase you but people can get to you can't they and that's why yeah, it's hard yeah. for most most people out there who, who just don't talk about it yeah well like I, i've said this when i found out that anxiety is it's a bit like cancer really it doesn't really care who it attacks and gets to um, whether you're really successful you're very happy or outgoing I would say I was all those things you know what I mean I'm a very happy outgoing person but um it's just a, a little blip in your life and obviously the, the main thing is how you deal with it 
And why do you think it is that it, for so many years people haven't felt the ability to talk about it openly? I think it's probably, it's, um, and I can agree with this as well because I rela relate to it, it's an embarrassment really because you, you kind of feel like you're in trouble or you need help and a lot of people are not um, really confident to say, look guys I'm struggling here, I need help, but another thing I've learned as well is it's kind of okay not to be okay really, and you're not on your own as you've just pointed out because a lot of people have it. And, a, and a, the good strong point that you make as well is about social media because nowadays, and I think back then, we didn't have social media and now there's kind of no escape from this perfect life so uh, there's a lot of pressure on people. Oh of course and you just have to look at like sadly obviously what happened the last couple of weeks with lovely Sophie from Love Island that's just a, an example of another one and a part and stuff like that. It doesn't really care who it attacks anxiety and you could have the best life going, the best career, in the best relationship but I think with social media it's out there it's People want the, the best life, you have to have the best shoes, the best the best friends, be in the best restaurants and I think it's all a bit of smoke and mirrors and obviously the younger generation have got, I worry about what's going to happen later on in the, the next few years because these they've got all that to come. So what should people do if they suffer from anxiety and they've decided just from watching this or from your campaign that they've decided yeah. now they want to speak to Well someone? the main thing um, to do, the campaign is called hashtag here for you which is basically getting your friends involved and you as a pledge to your friends if you, if you haven't heard from a friend in a long time just pick up the phone or send them a little text and stuff so it's basically um, the friends um, helping you out. Anxiety, um, the main thing I would say is talk. There's a lot of people to talk to. You can get in contact with your doctor and your GP. Your friends and your family are probably the first that I would do. And then you could go to the GP. And then CBT training, which I have myself, is very... Thing. And there's also there's lots of other people. That's cognitive behavioural yeah, therapy. therapy. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So it's do, it, and the long story of that as well. Long and short is it's just um, when your anxiety attacks, and obviously there's different triggers for different people. It's then training your mind to think, oh well, it's coming on. It's coming. On, how do I behave now? And you can speak to people like the Samaritans and Mind. They're all really good organisations. Okay. Too. And your campaign just before we go is um, what? What is it you are aiming to be doing then yourself with this campaign? Well, with social media, obviously, I've, it, in this my opinion that obviously it's a bad thing the social media we all have our own pros and cons of that it's just mainly we're going to see how quickly we can get a good message on social media trending around twitter okay. and facebook just to say to people if you like myself if i hadn't heard from someone one day and i get a, you see a thing on social media michelle yourself i'm sure you guys will do the pledge yourself pledging to say look i'll be here for you as friends that could perk someone's day up and it could, like the dark side of it, you could actually essentially save someone's life really. I, I love that, I think sometimes you just need to say that you're there and we just don't do it. Well it is as well and a, a lot of people with anxiety suffer from loneliness so you could read a text message wrong or if you haven't had a text message in two hours you could al almost feel like you're not welcome mm -hmm. and then that could bring on several other worries, i.e. panic attacks like obviously we've spoke about myself yeah. like off camera and stuff that I've had myself so it's just that um, that's saying I'm here, basically, which is why it's called Here For You. Which is brilliant. Well, thanks very much for Thank coming you very in. Much and we will get behind me. that as well. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely do. get behind that. And of course, we've got um, some more stuff coming for you over the next few weeks. Yeah, ago. I'm here. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, so there we go. All right. Gadget Guru. Gadget Guru. Thank you. Well, luck has popped onto our sofa now, everybody. We are treated. We are very, very treated. Well, do you know, it's very hot treated. in here at the minute, but yes. I think these guests have taken it down a notch or two because they are seriously cool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We are really privileged, aren't we? To have I feel you. excited. Yeah. Can We've you got tell? DJ Paulette. Yes. We've got Amy, and uh, she's from Tariff and Dale. Yes. And they're in the house. Yeah, we are. We are we all here. here. You <laughs> have been I'm doing just amazing and amazing and amazing for just for forever, really. More amazing. Yes. Yeah, yeah I tried. I had moments of doing amazing <laughs> and now I'm just doing amazing. 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 So uh, yeah. tell everybody exactly what it is you do for those that might not know you and if you don't you're stupid. I do lots of things but yes. I'm most commonly known and it's not common at all because it's quite <laughs> posh but I'm a DJ. Mm. And um, I've been DJing since 1992 uh -huh. which makes me younger than some people and older than others. And what made you get into DJ? Why DJ? I fell into it like a big pot of musical honey. Like <sighs> Winnie the you've, Pooh. You've seen some music. great music though, you know, to, to have DJ through the 90s into the noughties yeah. and stuff. There's some good tunes. Yeah, there's been some belting tunes and I also had the 
luck and fortune of working for some record labels that put out some of the best of the dance music at the same time. So at the same time as I was DJing, I was working for um, Talking Loud and um, and Manifesto Records. So my artists were Josh Wing, High State Consciousness, Todd Terry, Dave Morales, um, Masters at Work, New Eureka Soul. So all that time between 94 to 98 and into the noughties, when I was DJing in London and working in the music industry, I was working with all these fantas fantastic artists that were just starting out and who are now enormous. And yeah, as are you though. Massively awesome. Yeah. As are you, yeah. yes. Yeah. Well, we did talk off camera just before about mm -hmm. like, the legendary places that you have DJed, yes. like Hacienda, Zap Club, Pipes, Club. everywhere. Yeah. But, this is exciting because you've got a great gig coming up at Times yeah, and Day, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. This is like my um, second, well, my first. I was going to say first. Home. First <laughs> home, first home in Manchester since I came back because Nick um, was the first person to put me on as a DJ when I moved back to Manchester in 2015, and and since then we've had this just blossomed amazing it, relationship at Times and Day, and we've done quite a few special parties, you know, like one-offs. And so this year, we're doing the dedicated Pride party. Yeah. So the brain is this lady. Yeah. Oh, tell us about it. Anyway. Yeah, I yeah. think, I feel like we're such a big part of the LGBT community anyway. Um, we welcome everyone, and we always have, and everyone's been receptive to us as well. So we've been here for three years now, and we thought, right, we need to make a difference and we need to say thank you and really kind of throw a massive party for everyone and um, so we've created rainbow the pride party. And it's, have you ever been it's a beautiful venue as well oh yeah cool. oh, i've been gorgeous. there because you can use your canal street online you can. Well, yeah. so I, yeah. I, i've had quite a few good times in there <laughs> no it is but i think yeah. this will be like you say a big celebration and yeah. i think what a time to do it so what do you do would you have to get tickets not at all no we our policies obviously we're open to everyone so it's free free entry paulette will be djing from about yeah. five o'clock um, obviously we're going to have all the bar guys doing special cocktails, all pride related. Um, we're just going to have loads of fun. I just think it's about embracing the weekend to come. It's obviously on the Friday, so it's right at the beginning of Pride weekend. Um, and we, yeah, we're just super excited. Yeah. Have a great vibe. I don't know where to go to. You've got Rainbow Eyeshadow on tonight. I have got Rainbow Eyeshadow. Yeah. You have to come and do all the stuff. Yeah, you've you got, got all the yes. stuff. So, yeah, we're wearing all the colours. I've got yeah. the rainbow socks on, actually. Oh, yeah, have as well. Look at this. Yeah. We're all in colours today. Yeah, we're all wearing hey. all the colours. Yeah, I check the socks it. out. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, yeah. Thank you for coming in. It sounds yeah. absolutely yeah. fabulous, and please do come back again. Yeah, come and dance to the disco, the yeah. funk, the soul, the the beautiful music, and and you know just getting a little mention in. I did say I do lots of things. Yes. And I've got this exhibition coming up at the Lowry as well yes. in um, September, which is a little bit of a retrospective of um, my career and my life as a first generation. So is it, art, is, it, is it art, is it acrylic, is it it's, photo? It's a mixture, it's a multimedia installation, so there's sound, there's lights, there's photos, oh, there, there's, there's lots of things yeah. that have been exclusively made, um, and yeah, and everyone's some banging invited, music. and some banging music, yeah. so everyone's invited, so it's kind of like an extension. There we are. Tariff and Dale, Rainbow Party, and then the Lowry Homebird exhibition. Fabulous, I think our co level has just gone up. <laughs> I'm feeling like that, yeah. That's it. Yeah. A little bit more funky. I might yeah. have to get my mirror ball out.